walking with God and in that closeness with God, I was making petitions unto God. I was asking God for something, and I was asking him to do something for me. The vast majority of my prayer life revolved around my needs or, or those that were close uh, uh, by me or, the, or family members or, or for the ministry of whatever it might be. I began to be one that just talked to the Lord about my needs. You know, Brother Barnes, are you saying we shouldn't talk to the Lord about our needs? No, that's not what I'm telling you. But that should not be the only reason that you talk to the Lord. It should not be the very, it should not be the vast majority of your private prayer life to the Lord. It should not be just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. How many have experienced that in your own life? Well, you've spent the majority of your time asking God to do something for you. If you say you haven't, then you lied. Because that is our nature. That's our nature. The nature of man is simply this. Even the blood-washed saints of God, we will be blessed of God because we have a need, and the need gets met, and we're rejoicing, and we're, we're praising for a season, but we get satisfied because he's met our needs, and then we forget to talk about him and, and talk to him for a while, and we forget to give our testimony about the delivering power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we find ourselves again walking in a valley or finding ourselves once again in a pit, or we find ourselves once again with our proverbial back up against the wall and we don't know what we're going to do. So the first thing we do is say, Abba, Father, I need, I need, I need, I need. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. I have three daughters and uh, one of my daughters and I love her. I love her as much as I do my other two daughters and uh, it has changed drastically recently. But I had a daughter that every time the phone rang, I knew there was a problem. And every time the phone would call, I knew there was a need. And I, I, I began to preach. was going back now a number of years. But now that child has been settled. And God's doing something very special in her life. And that's the way it should be. When they have a need, they should be able to come to mom and dad and say, I've got a need. I, I need you to help me in this situation. But that should not be. And I'm not saying my daughter was this way. But that should not be the only time that we talk to mom and uh, dad. We should be telling mom and dad that we love them even when they we don't feel like we love them. We need to, we need to tell them that we're going to be there for them even if we don't feel like being there for them. We need to tell them that as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. I believe the Heavenly Father, He'll give you what you need because the Bible said if we come and ask in faith believing that He would give us what we ask in the name of Jesus. But every now and then, I think He wants to hear you say, Father, I've come to you today and I just want to tell you that I love you. I just want to keep, Daddy, I love you. Abba, Father, I'm here to express my praise and I'm here to express my love. I'm here to lift you up and let the world know that you're God. And I don't have a need today. I don't have any problem today. But I just want to praise you. Why? Because you're God. I just want to praise you because of who you really are. Amen. The psalmist writes in these last six psalms, he begins to write some great things about praise. He writes in Psalm 149, he said, Praise ye the Lord and sing a new song. I'm here to tell every one of you today that you need to learn to get a song in your heart get a praise upon your lips and you need to sing that praise is unto God and not only sing that praise is unto God but sing those praises to the world. We're now in a situation and you say, Brother Barnes, you talk a lot about the church and the world. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. If you go to the book of John, John 17, the chapter uh, 17, it's the prayer where Christ prayed before he was crucified when he prayed for the church. If you read those verses 19 times, in that chapter he talks about the world and the church. 19 times he admonishes about the world. He begins to pray, and he's praying to the heavenly Father for you and I. He said they're in the world, but they're not 
of the world. The world hated me, so the world will hate them. Protect them from the world. If you don't believe the world is your enemy, you don't know the Word of God. And I'm here to tell you, brother and sister, I'm going to just tell you this plain and with all, as, they would, as, as I was told last night, I need to say it under the anointing and with great love. God is getting tired of his people being a quiet people. God's getting tired of his church being a quiet church. God's getting tired of his church being a testimonial-less church. I just made that word up. That just means you don't have a testimony. He got the word of God said we are overcomers by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. We come into the house of God and we're just sitting there and the world's looking at us saying, what's your God done for you? Well, he ain't really done anything for me. If he saved you, if he woke you up this morning, if he gave you your right mind, if you had the ability to feed yourself, you have a reason to praise God today. And the world's looking at us, and we're just going around moping and groping and living downcast and downtrodden like we're defeated. I've said this a lot, and I hope we don't have any folk like that. I know you don't have them here in Dillon. I, you just can't have them in Dillon in South Carolina. And some have heard me say this, but I'm, it's worth repeating again. How you doing today, Brother Bishop or Elder, Council Member? How you feel today? Well, woke up this morning. My lower back was killing me. Took two Percocets, a Vicodin, and a hit of that medical marijuana. Oh, I know where I'm at. And my back is still killing me. Brother Deacon, please tell me how you really feel. Well, not only is it my back, but Lord, it's run all the way down my hips and my knees. And if that weren't bad enough, I woke up this morning and my toes were larger than they should be. It's just all the way down in my feet right now. Deacon, how do you really feel? Well, that woman I'm married to looked at me and said, I love you, but I don't love, I'm not in love with you anymore. After 15 years, and she's moving out tomorrow. No, Deacon, please tell me how you really feel. Doctor said there's something wrong in my head. I got a spot behind my eyes, probably cancer. Or probably an aneurysm could probably explode and kill me any moment now. I don't know. I just I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, Deacon, do you have any more problems? Yeah, the plant's going to close. and I've been working there 45 years, and my 401K done fell through the floor. Lord, and that President Obama's up in there, and I, you know, he done took everything away from us because he one of them dad Democrats, and I'm a Republican, and I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to make it. Brother Deacon, member of the Church of God, you're not going to make it. You're already through. You've already given up. You'll never be victorious with an attitude like that. The deacon's wife has walked out on her on Thursday night. He shows up at Friday night revival. How you doing, brother deacon? I'm blessed and I'm highly favored of God. And I've come here to give God some praise. I've come here to shout and holler hallelujah. Brother deacon, I heard a rumor about you and it wasn't too good. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. They're talking about me. And when they're talking about me, that means I must be doing something right with God.
Oh, Brother Deacon, I heard that they're going to close your plant where you've worked 45 years. Don't worry about that, honey. That's not my source. I, my source is Jehovah Jireh. He's my El Shaddai. He's my El Shaddai. And I'm going to holler, hallelujah, anyhow, anyhow. I'm going to holler, hallelujah, anyhow. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, you're not going to affect the change in, a, in the community. You're not going to affect the change in Dillon, South Carolina, by being a quiet church, by being a dead church. But you'll affect the change and turn the city upside down if you're a praising church uh, that will magnify and glorify and, tes and testify of the Lord's grace and power. Hallelujah, anyhow. Look at somebody and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Glory to God. Hallelujah, anyhow. Glory to God. Glory to God. Every word that you read tonight, those 12 different phrases that you read tonight, simply boiled down to one word. And that word is spoken the same in every language around the world. If you're in Switzerland or Sweden or some of the European countries, the older classical countries, it's more like the word Alleluia. If you're in the Sudan and Africa, the dark regions of the darkest jungles of Africa, it may have a heavy accent, Alleluia. If you go to the islands, the Hispanic islands or South America, it may be hallelujah. If you go to North Carolina and South Carolina, it may be hallelujah. 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 Whatever it means, it still says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath holla. Hallelujah unto God. And Brother Brian, you got to learn to say hallelujah anyhow. When all hell comes against you and everything is going wrong, you've got to learn to say hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. You've got to learn how to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, I feel him here. I feel the, I feel the help showed up. All oh, the help has shown up here tonight in the Dillon Church of God. When you have the enemy looming before you, when everything seems to be going right, have you ever noticed when everything seems to be going right, suddenly you face an enemy unlike you've ever faced before in your life.